what is router store in ngrx and how you can use that to get all our router data to our store and how you can use it to make our component more cleaner we'll see in this video hi everyone this is subrat and you are watching fun of heuristic so on this channel you will get to know about the programming languages the framework and all about the algorithm so please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet the router store in ngrx helps us to bind our angular router with our store so you can track all the changes happening in your router and you you can also get your URL parameters, your query parameters, and your fragment, and lots more. And to implement that, we'll go to our code. So here, we'll first add our router store in our application. So for that, you can do like this, ng add, then at ngrx slash router hyphen store. So it will update your package JSON and your app module. First, we'll go to our package JSON. If you check, your router store is added and if you'll go to our app module here you can see that our store root connecting module that for root is added so this enables your router modules means router store in your application if you have watched all our previous videos from this series then you know that we till now we haven't have the router in our application so i have done some basic modification to add the route so here if you go i have created a component called home component and i have added all the content which was inside our app component to the home component and i have added a component called movie component and which we are getting through our id and if you go to your movie component it is just displaying a single card so for now, I have just added a single movie just to display. The application is started. Now we'll go to our browser. And if you click on one card, it will navigate to that ID and we'll get that movie details. So for now, you will always get Edge of Ultron because I have hard coded that. And we'll see how to do that with our router store. To get router data in our store, we need to add router in our state. So we'll go to our reducer and if i'll just scroll up here you can see i have added a property called router and the type of that will be router reducer state and we'll use this router in our reducer which we have added in our previous video and if you haven't watched what is a meta reducer and how it works it is pretty awesome please go ahead and watch that one i will link that in the card so here we have added the router your router store by default gives you a reducer called router reducer like these two reducer we have created but our router re reducer is from router store from ngrx if you add this one it will going to store all our router changes in our store if you'll go to our application and if i will refresh in our redux dev tools if you'll go to the state you will get a parameter called router and inside that you have all your router root data which parameter is going. So if I'll just navigate to another child, which is slash one. So here you can see the parameter is got updated. If you have some query parameter, then you will get that as well. If you have some fragments, then you will get that as well. So according to your parameter, in this case, our ID is one. So you can we can use this ID to fetch the data from our selector. So now we don't need our activated route in our component to fetch what's the ID we are passing. So our component will be pretty cleaner. It will not depend on the router. It will not depend on the service. It's just what is meant to be. But we have a problem here. Here you can see we are getting lots of data, lots of uh, things which we don't need. And storing this many data for a big application. So for here we have only one route. That, that's why we have only one for first child. If you have multiple level of route, then you have multiple level of first child and all those data which we don't need. And it can take a pretty big amount of memory in your client system. And to avoid that, we can write a serializer. So what a serializer will do, it will only fetch which data you need. Inside our store, we'll add a file called router serializer. And in that, we are doing this. So I will explain the code. So we have an interface called router state and it is the state like our movie state, but it's for router and it will fetch our URL parameters, our URL and our query parameters. So if we'll go to a browser, here you'll see we have our URL, we have our params and this is as a 
URL params and we have our query params. And if you want to fetch the fragment, you can add that here as well. And if some other thing you want to fetch from your main router store, then you can add that to your router state which you have created. So on a simple term, you can think the serializer as a map operator, which is just mapping whole your router data to a smaller object. In our router serializer class, which implements our router state serializer, and again, the type of that is which state we have created, and which has a method called serialize, which accepts router state snapshot, and which is your whole router state means from here, the router which we have here, the whole router state snapshot and which returns your router state. We are getting our root. And as I told, if you have multiple routes, like I was explaining here, you will get your params in your last first child. So inside a root, you will have a first child. Again, you will have a first child. Again, you have a first child. So it's like a tree structure and you will get your parameters in your last first child. So what we are doing here is we are iterating till we have the first child and we're just setting that to our route and you are getting our URL and our query parameters from our router state. And if you go here, our URL and our query parameters, we can get it from our root so that we are getting that directly from our router state snapshot and for our params, which we have navigated to our first child, first child, first child, and that we are getting inside our params. And at the end, we are returning our this three value, which is same as our router state. And now we need to register our router serializer in our router store. So for that, we'll go to our app module. And here we have our store router connecting module. Inside that means inside the for root, we'll add our serializer as our router serializer. And now if you go to our application here, you will see that we got our router like previous, but our state is reduced to the three parameter which you, we are sending it from our serializer. If I'll just go to some URL that our URL changed, our params, we are getting ID and our query params, we don't have any. So that's how it's saving our data in our state. And now we'll use our params to find the actual data from our store. So as you can see here, we already have our movies, means all the movies. So here we just need to iterate through that store data and we just need to display in our component. And now we'll go to our selector that is movie selector. And here first we'll add a selector to get all our parameters from our router store. So if we'll go to the browser, inside our router we have the state and inside our state we have the parameters. So if you want to get that, we'll write a selector for that. You can do like this. We can give a name as router parent. So I haven't exported it because it's not required in your component directly. In that, we are getting our state from our movie state dot route dot state means th this is not the whole state. This is the state what we have inside our route. And from that, we are returning our params which is our these parameters is ID and one. And if you are thinking what all this syntax and how it works, then please go ahead and watch our selector video. I will link that in the card so that this thing will be pretty clear for you. And now we got our router params, which is our current router param. Then we can do this. And this is to get our movies, creating a selector. And in that we have passed our movie selector and which is returning all our movies from our movie state and we have used our router param selector and here we are getting movies from our movie selector and we are destructuring our ID from our router params and inside that I'm just getting if our ID is same I'm returning the zeroth index of that and now if you'll go to our component that is movie component here instead of adding this value so I'll just remove all this now we need our store to be imported. So I'll do that. So I have injected the store. Now we'll assign our movie observable with our selector. And if you go to the HTML here, what we are doing is we have a section. I have added a NGF directive and we are using our async pipe in our movie observable as movie. 
am just putting that inside the card. So now if we'll go to the browser, now we got our real data. If I go back, if I just hit on infinity war, we are getting infinity war. If I'm clicking on end game, we are getting end game. So that's how you can use your router store and your selector to get all your data to your component. And if you see here, our component is pretty clean. We are not using activated route to fetch the parameter and again, pass that to a store or pass that to a selector. You may have noticed here, we have some extra action trigger. If I'm just clicking on a card, again, three action is dispatched, which is our request and our navigation and our navigated. Inside your navigation, you are getting all your URL parameter chain. So that is the payload. So if you want to do some checks like your guards, then you can use these actions to implement your logic. If you will get some error in your routers or there will be some error thrown by the guard, then your action will be router cancel or router error. You can use those action in your reducer to make a variable true or false and it, again, it all depends on your scenario, what you are doing. And you can ask me that, Subrat, I don't need to do all the serialization. I don't want to do, it's fine. I will get all the data. Then how will I get those data to our selector? And for that, I'll go to the code and in our app module, I'll just comment our serializer. And in our selector, Angular gives us a pretty good selector to fetch all the data from our router store. So I will just paste that one here. And if you can see, it's a feature selector of here passing your router state and it is fetching from your router. And we have a get selector, which is from our router store. And from that, you can get all your data, which you all need in your application. Okay. And we have all the explanation here. So for, for now, we'll just need our router params. I'll just going to use this here. If I go to the browser, here you'll see it's working as expected. You can just pass a selector, get all the data and you can use whatever you want. So for now, I'll just comment this one. I will use our router params. So that's it for today, guys. Today we saw what is our router store in NGRX and how you can use that to get all your router data, means all your query parameter, your router parameter, your fragments, and how you can serialize the data so that it will not be load in your application. And we have used our selector to get the data from our router parameters and from our store. Combinedly, we get the data of what we need for our specific movie component. Please hit the like button if you are liking the video till now. Please do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss future videos. Please share this video among your friends, family, colleague and let them know how they can use your router store and how they can make their component pretty clean. Please give some valuable comment in the comment section below. Those are pretty helpful. We're going to meet in the next video. Till that, stay happy. Bye-bye.